Well, did you have a ball, best ball that you grooved off of? I guess I did. <laughs> and every every hitter did. I'll tell you where it was. It was well, right there, middle, right there, middle in. <laughs> fast. Yeah. I, yeah. No stuff right. on no, it. Didn't, no, it didn't make any difference really how fast. No, if I had two strikes, it was a little different deal. It meant a lot yeah, of different. Yeah. But when I was looking for that pitch and I had it, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I just compensated for the guy's ability to throw the ball. Well, Charlie spoke with Baseball Hall of Famer Ted Williams back in 1988. The Boston Red Sox slugger was a 17 All-Star and two-time MVP. He's the subject of a new biography. It is ginormous. It is called <laughs> The Kid, The Immortal Life of Ted Williams. Author Ben Bradley Jr. is joining us at the studio. I just have to hold up this book, Ben, because I've never seen a biography this big. And I just recently <laughs> flew, flew to South Africa round trip. So I got lots of reading time with the kid. And this is what I learned about you and your love for Ted Williams. You have loved him, admired him for a very long time. He was a figure in my life. Um, I'm, I'm old enough that I saw him play the last uh, three or four years of his career and um, got his autograph once hanging out in the players parking lot behind Fenway Park. And you still have the ball. I still have the ball. Yeah. The ink fading badly with <laughs> the passage of 50 years. Didn't keep it as well as I probably should have in one of those glass cases. But over the long haul of this uh, decade that I spent um, uh, reporting and writing this book, some days when the, when the muses weren't clicking the way they should, I'd, I'd look at that ball and it, it would uh, give me the, the inspiration to keep plugging. But so much has been written about him, but for the first time you've got people to speak who have never spoken before, his daughters, right. an ex-wife, ex-girlfriends. How were you able to do that? And what were you trying to get from them? Well, um, you know, the, the, the early books focused mostly on, uh, done by mostly sports writers and focused on his um, exploits on the field. But I, I thought that there were big gaps in his personal life. He grew up a very, in a very tough childhood in Depression era San Diego. He um, concealed the fact that he was Mexican American, a fact that uh, hardly anyone knew until just a month before he died. Why'd he hide it? And well, he was worried that prejudice of the day uh, could hurt his baseball career. Mm -hmm. And uh, the prejudice didn't seem uh, to be uh, as acute as it was toward the black ball players of the day, but uh, he wasn't taking any chances. Mm -hmm. And uh, his relatives on the Mexican side of his family um, are still still rather distressed that uh, he hid this. In so much of that, I mean, he's known, of course, as the greatest hitter of all time, but he had a really complicated personal life, not only because of his upbringing, his parents were hard drinkers, and, and he led a very hard life, too. Yeah, he did, and he 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 struggled with anger. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the anger was perhaps rooted in resentment of his mother, who was a soldier in the Salvation Army uh, on the streets of San Diego, out until all hours of the night, saving souls, but not home mm -hmm. for Ted and uh, his younger brother Danny. So they were some of the first latchkey kids waiting on the doorstep for their mom to come home. No, but and when you say struggled with anger, you write that it was so intense, his daughters sometimes thought he was mentally ill. Well, he, he, you know, he was, he, was probably, he was probably bipolar before they knew what that was. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was able to channel the anger constructively on the ball field, because he said that he hit better angry, and he would <laughs> manufacture feuds with <laughs> the really baseball writers, and then go off on a tear and hit 500 for a while. He, I mean, he was... He was an ornery. I mean, he, he was great copy, wasn't he? I mean, if you're first sports <laughs> writer, copy. but they but but him. he was always himself. He was himself. It, he and true to himself, and uh, in the end, that 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 helped him. He outlasted his critics in many ways and became, in retirement, uh, more of a beloved figure than he was while he was playing. When he was constantly feuding and popping off. You know, he was a tall, lanky, skinny guy. Mm -hmm. He was nervous about that. He didn't think he was very strong, and he still holds records, a greatest hitter of all time. Could he have, could he have had those records today? Uh, those records today? In the steroid era? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I think one of the one of the things that that cuts for Williams is 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 uh, the there's no there's no question about his bona fides. Yeah, the game is different now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially with relief pitching becoming such a specialty. But he had four. I mean, he had 406 
uh, early in his career. But then you argue, actually, that when he was 39, he had 388, which may maybe even a bigger accomplishment. He, he thought that was a bigger achievement uh, than, than hitting 406 because he was 39. And, um, and if he'd had, if he'd had just, and he couldn't really run, Williams. All his hits were, you know, legit line drives. And but if he could have run like Mickey Mantle and got five, what they call leg hits, where you beat it out, you know, to, to first base, he could have hit 400 at, at age 39, which would have been incredible. But man, you really took us through his life in terms of his anger, his war service. He was kind. His kindness just to uh, underprivileged kids, and then the controversy about freezing his body. It was really. Very interesting. Well, the ending was uh, a, a sad, sad inglorious sad. ending uh, mm -hmm. for the greatest hitter that ever lived. And, the kid. Uh, I get into this with the backstory of his son, John Henry, uh, being interested in cryonics. And uh, according, to, according to his sister, they sold Ted on it. But yeah. I have my doubts. And John Henry's no longer with us. No. Really? All right, Ben Bradley Jr., congratulations on the book. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the kid is on sale now.